Welcome back to When Harry Met Board Games, where we feed our people with relatable content and our victory condition is your satisfaction. I'm Harry, and today we have another playthrough and review. Today I'm going to be playing through and reviewing this game right here, Devour. Full disclaimer, this is a pay playthrough and review. For more information on the game, check in the description box down below for details and a link. It is a card-based game with an animal theme, and this game here is for players, for one to three players, with a recommended age of six and older, and an estimated game length of 20 minutes. And as I mentioned, this game is a card-based game, so most of the components in the box are these cards here. You'll also find one die, a few tokens, and some standees. Now, this game comes with three different versions of the game, and I will talk a little bit more about some of the other versions or variants later on in this video but for the purposes of this video we'll be simulating and playing through only one of those three versions and that will be the forest floor version of the game and this is actually the solo variant for the game the other two variants are either two players only or two to three players so first of all we're going to talk about setup for setup for this forest floor variant you're going to start by locating and identifying the three baby eastern cottontail rabbit cards there are three of these and you're going to set these aside then you're going to shuffle the remaining cards in the deck once you're done shuffling, you will draw 21 more cards. You will shuffle those 21 cards along with the three Baby Eastern Cottontail Rabbit cards. And now you'll have a 24 card deck from which you will create a six by four grid, which will be your playing area. Once you have your six by four grid created, you're gonna locate your Mountain Lion standee and place it here on the top left a column of these six columns of cards here. Then you're going to locate your red fox standee here, and you're going to place it on the lower right card. So remember, the mountain line is going to go right above this column of cards, while the fox will go on top of the actual card itself. Now, in this game, basically, the solo player is taking on the role of this red fox who is hunting three rabbits. Uh, before they get caught by the mountain lion. Now we are done with setup and we're going to show you how the game plays. So on a player's turn, they will start by moving the red fox pawn or standee. And there are two options as far as movement is concerned. You can either move your pawn here, or your standee, two spaces, any combination of vertical and horizontal movements. Uh, there are some uh, restrictions as far as movement is concerned. You can never move diagonally, and you can never end your turn or your movement in the same spot that you began in. So there's no way around it. You do have to move your standee. Now, your two options are you can move the standee one space uh, to a card that's adjacent, orthogonally adjacent. But if you move it only one space, then you're not going to be able to reveal the card. You're not going to be able to turn it over. And that's pr pretty much the name of the game. This is basically like the classic game of memory. You're trying to flip over cards and try to discover, in particular, your objective, which are those three rabbit cards. Now, if you move two spaces, you will be able to flip over the card that you finished your movement on. Now, why would a player ever want to move one? Well, remember, we are running away or trying to avoid this mountain lion. So we never want to end our movement in a space where either A, the mountain lion intersects with that column or row, or B, we never want to end on a space where once the mountain lion moves, they're going to intersect with that column or row because throughout the course of this game, the mountain lion is going to keep on moving one space at a time clockwise. So that's something that we're trying to avoid. So it's the beginning of the game. We're pretty far away from the mountain lion. So we're going to move one and two. And again, when you move two spaces, you can flip over the card and see what's there. And here we have the cave cricket. And each of these animals, you have lots of different critters and animals that you'll find uh, in these cards. This is a forest themed uh, game after all. And lots of these have these icons, these particular actions that are triggered when you see them. The game does come with this helpful aid here, which kind of tells you what the different icons uh, signify. So here we have the smarts 
uh, logo here or icon. It says swap any two cards on the forest floor. And now that I'm done and I've triggered that action, I'm actually going to flip the card back face down and try to use my memory. Remember that this is the cave cricket. Remember that unless I intentionally want to swap any cards, coming back here serves no purpose for me. So I'm going to try to remember as best as possible that this is the cave cricket. You always flip your cards back face down unless for whatever uh, reason there is a power that allows you to keep the card face up so now we are done uh, with the player's turn and at the end of each player's turn we are going to move the mountain lion one place uh, to the right clockwise and they're gonna keep on going clockwise and one of the end game conditions first of all you're trying to win by collecting or discovering those three Eastern Cottontail Rabbits. But you can lose the game if at any point you and the lion intersect with a column or a row. Or if the mountain lion is able to do a full cycle and make it all the way back to the starting place. So it's kind of like a timer for you to win the game. Okay, so we are done with that. And now I'm going to make my movements and I got I got to consider where I move because if I end up on this column, the mountain lion is moving there next and I will lose. So I do not want to do that. So I might want to do one and two. And let's see here. And we've got the mosquito. And again, we're going to use this handy dandy uh, little icon uh, key here. And we're going to try to find what the uh, mosquito does. And here it says, open fields. You may move an additional space. This card is always active. And sometimes you might find yourself in a situation where you are obligated to end your movement in a space where you would intersect with the mountain lion. So we're actually going to just leave it at that. We're going to turn it back face down. We're going to keep on going and we're going to move this guy here. And now this guy's going to move again. The fox is going to move again. And I could pass through the space where the mountain lion is. I just cannot end my turn there. So I'm going to go one and two, flip this over. And we've got this scat over here. And first of all, uh, we have a couple of symbols here. This symbol here indicates that this card is going to be kept face up. So now we won't forget that this scat card is here. Also, this icon here tells us that this is a block. You cannot be moved onto or through. You cannot move onto or through this space. So if you're found in a position where you're here, you might have to work your way around it. And... That's very important to know because I mentioned that two of the potential losing triggers are if you ever intersect with the column or row of the mountain line or the mountain line makes a full cycle all the way back to their starting space. But a third way you could potentially lose is if on your turn uh, you cannot make any uh, legal move. That's a kind of like a stalemate, if you will, and you'll be forced to lose the game. So... We're done. We're going to move this guy one more space. And now I'm going to go one and two over here and flip this over. And here we've got the baby eastern cottontail rabbit. So now we're going to have a rabbit encounter. What's going to happen is we're going to roll this uh, six-sided die. And if I roll anything that does not have a bunny rabbit icon on it, I will have successfully captured this rabbit. And... I did. I rolled this uh, bird symbol here, and I will be able to capture the first rabbit here. So I am one third of the way towards winning the game. Now that I've emptied that space, I will replace that open space with one of the cards from the deck that was not among the first 24 cards of the grid. So there will always be a 6x4 grid. And now we are done. We're going to move this player here to the right. 
And again, I'm going to have to make some moves here. And I'm wondering what I want to do. I think I'm going to go one and two and see this right here. And guess what? It's another baby eastern cottontail rabbit. So I've gotten very fortunate. I'm going to roll this die here. And again, I rolled an icon. It looks like a turtle shell here. That's not a rabbit. So I will be able to capture the rabbit. And I will replace this right here. And move the mountain lion back over here. Now with the cottontail rabbits, if I were ever to roll an icon that does uh, have the rabbit icon on it, that means I have failed. And when you fail, you keep the rabbit card face up and then you move it two spots uh, any direction adjacent. So you swap it with two cards away. In other words, you're going to have to work towards getting to it. You're not going to stay on the spot that already had the rabbit. Okay, so now we are done. And I am going to move two spaces again. And I do not want to stay here for long because eventually this guy is going to go here and make his way there. Uh, so I'm wondering, I think I'm going, you know what, for now I'm going to go one, two. Let's see what's here. And we've got the yellow bullhead catfish. And this here tells me that I immediately have to roll the die. And if I do not roll a bunny icon, then I'm going to lose a turn. So that would be terrible because this guy's going to move here in one turn and here in another turn. So I ended up taking a risk that might end up costing me. So... Here we go. I did not roll a bunny icon. So again, I'm going to have to skip a turn. So this guy would move here for one turn. And then for the turn that I would skip, he would end up moving here, which means he would line up with my fox over here. And basically, it means that the mountain lion has captured the fox and the solo player has lost the game. So as you can see, lots of elements from the classic game of memory, you're flipping cards, trying to remember where they are, but there are lots of other things going. Each card or character or creature here has some uh, special action that is triggered. Some of them are triggered immediately. Others are activated uh, according to the will of the players or what have you. Some of these cards can have detrimental actions or positive actions that favor the players. Uh, there's tons of different characters. There's other uh, predatory creatures you got to worry about, like the black uh, vulture here. And uh, you got the black bear. You even got a hurricane card. Lots of cool uh, forest-themed animal life uh, content here. Uh, so if you like uh, animals, that's something to consider. And I mentioned earlier in the video that this game comes with two other versions of the game. You have the outfoxed version of the game where you basically play uh, an abstract strategy game of sorts uh, between two players, one versus one. And then you have a, uh, a third version of the game, which is the prey version of the game. And that is for two, two, three players where players are basically uh, combating against each other with their different animal cards. And you have a different set of cards for that version of the game. So I find that it's really cool, really neat that this game comes with three different versions of the game. Also, this first version here, the forest floor version of the game that I just demonstrated, uh, the rule book comes with an additional kind of like campaign version of playing the game where you would go through four different games successively and each of the four games represents a different season so you've got spring summer fall and winter and each season gets incrementally more difficult and the layout of the grid looks different from season to season and finally by the time you make it to the fourth season the winter season that will be the hardest mode of the game i find that to be a really cool uh, and neat concept I find that the age recommendation here uh, is very appropriate, six and older, especially for the solo version of the game, uh, because as the rulebook mentions, the solo version can actually be played as a cooperative game of sorts, where one adult player can have a younger player uh, help or assist 
him or her in the decision making and in the memorizing process of trying to figure out where the different cards are. So again, I think if you like playing card based game with children, if you like playing games like memory, but want to take it to the next level, uh, a more thematic version, and also just um, introduce this concept of player powers or character powers with these different cards, then I think this is a game you absolutely have to consider. And on top of it all, you get rewarded with two additional games basically in one box. Because again, this game comes with three versions, Prey, Forest Floor, and Outfox. And if you want to learn more about Devour and the other two variants that come in the box here, check in the description box for a link for more details and information. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining us here when Harry met board games. This is Harry saying take care, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have fun gaming. Bye-bye.